Now that the playoffs are set, the Baltimore Ravens know a few things officially. One, uh, they know who their four possible opponents are for the divisional round. And two, they know who all of their opponents are for next year. Now, while they officially know those things, there are some things that aren't official that they just don't know about right now yet. And depending on how things go, they may not officially know who their offense and defensive coordinators are for next year. Because both Mike McDonald their defensive coordinator, and Todd Monken, their offensive coordinator, have been requested to be interviewed for head coaching jobs. Team Keep It Clean, we're about to get into it, but before we do, I appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn them notifications on so you do not miss not one single video, and leave a like on the video. Y'all been going crazy with it. I appreciate it. Y'all been helping the channel grow. Let's keep this thing moving. We had 72,000. Now, let's get to 73,000. In a week, in a week and a half, I know that's a lot to ask, but anyway, let's keep this thing moving, I, I love y'all so much and I appreciate what y'all do. Now, uh, somebody else who appreciates what the Baltimore Ravens have done uh, is the NFL world and is the NFL coaching carousel, uh, because as we know, every single year, so many coaches get fired, but then so many coaches also get hired, and when you have a successful team, especially an extremely successful team like the Baltimore Ravens have been, and you look at them and you see, man, they made such a big turnaround on offense they made such a big turnaround on defense as well then you go straight to those coordinators oh can we possibly poach them from the Baltimore Ravens coaching staff well this could end up happening because uh Mike McDonald starting with him uh this report came from Ian Rappaport he said uh Ravens promising defensive coordinator Mike McDonald received the request to interview with the commanders sources said one of the bright young minds so Mike McDonald, the command, because the commanders they've been looking far and wide. They they are conducting interviews with literally everybody that they possibly can, putting in requests for everybody they possibly can. And Mike McDonald, oh, that would be um tragic if Mike McDonald. Like we will be happy for him, of course, but obviously for selfish reasons as Ravens fans, we will be upset and sad and disappointed if he left to go pursue a, a head coach job with another team because that would mean that we lost him. And while we have seen different defensive coordinators come and go, and some have been very, very successful, multiple have been very successful with the Baltimore Ravens, with Mike McDonald, I think a lot of Ravens fans look at him in a different light. Uh, because over the past couple of years, especially I think it was last year, where when, when you look at John Harbaugh, uh, when you look at John Harbaugh, you think about the possibility of him retiring soon. And I've said it like I think that if the Baltimore Ravens win the Super Bowl this year, then John Harbaugh, I think he will go out on top and then he may move to a, a more front office type of role. We'll see. It's to be determined. But. Ravens got to win it all first so we can even have that conversation, but I, I could see John Harbaugh moving to something like that and stepping down because he even joked about it last year. He did a little sarcastic joke about it, talking about, oh, he, he only going to be coaching like a few more years. He said something like that. I'm paraphrasing, but anyway, he kind of insinuated like, oh, hey, that, that clock is ticking. Um, but with Mike McDonald, I think a lot of Ravens fans look at him as a possible replacement, not just for a continuous defensive coordinator role, but being a possible head coach with the Baltimore Ravens. He's a young guy. I think he's, well, 37 years old, so super, super young. Uh, and he has shown his worth. And one thing that I think most Ravens fans love about Mike McDonald is his energy, his connection to the players, and his adjustments. <laughs> I think that's probably Baltimore Ravens' favorite thing about Mike McDonald, the way that he fixes what's broken. Because we saw him last year. We saw him in his first year as defensive coordinator. And it took a little bit. It, there were some growing pains involved for sure. And there were some collapses. There were some times when they gave up some fourth quarter stuff. There, there was all type of stuff last year. But overall last year, he did a pretty good job. But he took last year what he did. And he said, no, 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 no. We got to do better. We got to do better. We got to get faster. We got to get stronger. We got to get more productive. And he took last year and said, you know what, let's top that. And he did by far. Now, personnel has a lot to do with it as well. So it's not just strictly him because you got to have the right pieces in place. Uh, but this year, they certainly had more than enough of the right pieces in place, especially because they lost a lot of guys too. And there were some guys that they never ended up getting. But the fact that they lost so much and they were still able to continue to have the success on defense that they had, nobody wants to lose Mike McDonald. No Ravens fans wants to lose Mike McDonald at all. 
but it is a real possibility and you got to give people opportunities to flap their wings to grow uh, the baltimore ravens have been known to do that too they, they don't want to just hold somebody down they don't want to keep somebody restricted they don't want to hold somebody back from new opportunities uh remember with eric DaCosta. With Eric DaCosta, oh my goodness, I remember every single year people were trying to get Eric DaCosta, they were trying to uh, put in requests to to interview Eric DaCosta for jobs and stuff, but the Baltimore Ravens, they would shut it down, and I'd be like, man, they, they really hold Eric DaCosta back, why? But it was because they had a plan in place for him to take over for Ozzie Newsome. Let's see if they have a plan in place for Mike McDonald as well. Now, um, we did speak about another coordinator on the Ravens that is getting requested to be interviewed and that is none other than Todd Munkin let's read this report from Ian Rappaport he said Ravens offensive coordinator Todd Munkin is now on the board getting requests from the Chargers and Panthers so that's a double whammy that's that's two two for one so they both trying to get Todd Munkin so that his chances of leaving are even higher right now than a Mike McDonald because he has two interviews and if if y'all know y'all y'all been on an interview scene like I have been. I've been on a lot of interviews because I didn't had a lot of jobs and lost a lot of jobs but anyway um the more interviews you have the better for you because it's like all right my name is getting out there my resume is getting out there even more people are respecting my work my previous work my resume what I can do what I can bring to the table so I have yet another opportunity to land a nice job and with Todd Munkin it all depends, I think, on what his pursuits are, what his interests are. Does Todd Munkin want to remain an offensive coordinator or does he want to possibly be a head coach? And if he wants to be a head coach, you know, he's got to be happy about this right now. Uh, but that would be another big blow to the Baltimore Ravens if they lost their offensive coordinator. Now, we've seen, um, we've seen adjustments with Todd Munkin as well. Just this year alone, because obviously this has been his only year as offensive coordinator. Uh, but with Todd Munkin... Um, the way that he started off is a brand new offense, so we expected there to be growing pains. We expected there to be some miscues, some mishaps, some mistakes and all that, and there were. There were execution-wise, there were play call-wise. I remember um, there, there were some misses, there were drops, there were fumbles, there were sacks, uh, there were overthrows, there were all kind of stuff early on this season. And that happened throughout the season too, but it, it started to happen a little bit less. And then it started to become more far and few. Uh, but with Todd Munkin, there were miscues with him too. There were times when it seemed like he was just toying around with some stuff. Sometimes it seemed like he didn't have the proper flow of the game in some cases. Like I remember when he would get super screen happy. And I always talk about this because it's funny to look back on it now, but I remember when it was happening, it'd be like, whoa, what's going on? Like he would throw a screen to Zay Flowers and then within, within two plays, plays sometimes it'd be the very next play you would throw another screen to Zay Flowers and defenses would be all over that then another play you would throw another screen to Zay Flowers defense would be all over that uh but it just seemed like them screens they just they got so predictable but as we see and as we've seen with the Baltimore Ravens offense this season they have continued to grow they've continued to evolve and the thing that we love the most about Todd Munkin with Greg Roman and shout out to Greg Roman because he was not a bad offensive coordinator but just situationally it got a bit rough um, and then it felt like it, it was just time because the, the offense, they had reached their max heights that they were possibly going to reach under Greg Ro Roman. And it was just time to move on. It had been time to move on, but timing is everything. And it has worked out wonderfully with Todd Munkin. But the thing with Todd Munkin, he has gotten the most out of Lamar Jackson as a quarterback. Greg Roman got the most out of Lamar Jackson as a runner. And we know what Lamar Jackson can do, but we just felt like he was being held back. And a lot of Ravens fans, we would say, man, Lamar Jackson is being held back. Uh, and then we see with Todd Munkin and the way that this offense has operated, he was being held back. But now they are really letting Lamar loose. And one thing that we really see that Todd Munkin talked about, that's another thing. He let his yes mean yes. And what I mean when I say that is he let his word speak for itself. He was true to his word because before this off, I mean, excuse me, before the season even started, one thing that Todd Munkin will continue to say, I'm going to give Lamar Jackson the keys to this offense. I'm going to let Lamar Jackson control this offense. I'm going to let him take over this offense. So I was like, okay, that sounds good. That sounds real good, as a matter of fact, just seeing Lamar in control. And we've seen Lamar in control at times, but it's only been in the two-minute drills. But with them two-minute drills, they've been extremely successful. So whenever the Ravens would be in two-minute offense, they'd be like, oh, yeah, they get, they killing it, man. They going. They getting it. But – that Lamar wouldn't have full control of this offense. But now we see what it's like with Lamar having control, and this offense has just been amazing. So shout out to Todd Munkin for that. Another thing 
Another thing, I don't know if you all have noticed, but this is a big thing that the Baltimore Ravens uh, have not had an issue with. And I remember talking to my guy, Jason, from Huddle It Up Films months ago. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to his channel. It's Huddle It Up Films. But I, I remember talking to him about this months ago. And he actually brought it up to me. And I was like, oh, my goodness. That's true. He said, did you notice that with the Baltimore Ravens this year, they have not had the issue with the play clock winding down? That has hardly ever happened this year. So I know a lot of people would say they will look at the offenses from previous years and when Lamar will be in the game, they will see, oh, man, why is the play clock? Why is it taking so long? To, 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 why is it taking so long to execute the play? Why is it taking so long to get the snap off? Oh, all these delayed games we get, we got to rush the plays. And da, 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 da. We get them off so slow and get them off so late. But then when Tyler Huntley would get in, they'd be like, oh, man, oh, see, look, it's Lamar Jackson. He's the reason why the play is getting in so late. Why is it not like that with Tyler Huntley? And then now you see with Todd Munkin, it's not an issue with anybody. It's not an issue at all. So, coincidence? I, I, I think not. But that is something that is so significant because if you had the more time you have when you get to the line, that allows Lamar Jackson to scan the field, to scan the defense, to see what type of coverage they're in, to check out of plays like we've seen him do a lot this year. Again, that control. That control that Todd Munkin has given Lamar Jackson, uh, that has been something that's so, so special. But we don't want to lose Todd Munkin either. We don't want to lose either coordinator. But, again, this is the price of success. When your team does extremely well, other teams, other franchises, they're going to look at that. They know your track record. They know your resume. And they're going to be like, oh, we want them. We want him. We want him. We want that coach, that coach. And don't forget about Anthony Weaver, too. He even got requested, too, uh, for a, a possible head coaching job as well. So that's what happens when you're a good team. Another reason why I truly believe that these Baltimore Ravens, they got to win it all this year. They have to. They got to. It, it is so. And I, know, I understand changes happen every single year with franchises. But this year, like, you got to, man, for real. Because so much changes, there's so much possible changes that are going to happen. And these, right now with the coordinators, it's just possibilities, but it's real possibilities. But then there's also changes with personnel because you're not going to bring everybody back. You're not going to be able to keep everybody. You have such a great team with so much great depth. Your team is not even at full strength right now, and they haven't been all year. But... You ended the season 13-4. and four. That's amazing. That is nothing short of amazing either. That, that, that is a beautiful thing. That, that is so significant because a lot of teams, and we've seen it in the past with the Baltimore Ravens, that when they lose, they lose people. They lose people, lose people, lose people, uh, but, and, and they will fall apart. But they will really fall apart when they lost Lamar. But with Lamar, no matter who they lost, they will be right in it. They will be right there every time. Every time. And speaking of uh, 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 this season, how, how special it is, we remember in 2019 how special that season was. Uh, and my guy, Shazab Kazim, he hit me up. He said, Engraven, uh, I wonder if you could talk about how eerily similar this season is to 2019. And it does have its similarities for sure. He talked about how the Ravens got the number one seed. Yep, they got it back in 2019 too. They, they dominated, they took care of their business, got the number one seed, and boom, they're here. Uh, he's talked about resting starters in the final week. Yes, it was the same thing, and I think it was still a great decision this year, especially when you look around and you still see the continued injuries. You, don't, you would not want, and I know some people wanted to play the starters in week 18 against the stick, but I'm like, no, don't do it. And they played a lot of defensive starters, as a matter of fact, but offensive starters, they're like, no. And even though the defensive starters played, it looked like they were like, ah, oh, whatever, oh, we, we chilling. It is what it is. Uh, but, yeah, I'm glad that they rested the starters for sure because you would hate to have an injury in a meaningless game. But another similarity, one that he didn't mention, was that we played the Steelers in the last week of the season in Baltimore too. That's how it was in 2019 as well. Play, played the Steelers last week of the season, rested the starters, had the number one seed already locked up. Uh, he talked about offensive coordinator and defensive coordinators getting asked for interviews to be head coaches. And, yes, that's exactly what happened because – I think the Browns requested Greg Roman. I think the Giants, did the Giants request Wink? I think they requested, I forgot who requested Wink, but somebody requested Wink as well. And I remember having the same conversation. No, we don't want them to go. We don't want them to leave. No, don't take our guys. But then they both ended up becoming the highest paid offense and defensive coordinators uh, that 
yeah, the f- following 2019, that's when the Ravens paid them. They said, oh, yeah, y'all ain't going nowhere, which we, we were glad about. I know I was glad about for sure. Now, a couple years after that, I was like, oh, I don't think it's working out. But, yeah, you know the rest of that story. But he talked about how he felt like Giro was distracted in 2019 thinking about being a head coach. Now, I get what you're saying, but I, I feel like a lot of us fans, we kind of use that as a cop out. Uh, if our team doesn't perform well in certain aspects during the playoffs, I, I feel like we can use that as a cop out. These are professionals. They know how to do more than one thing at once. And I, I know um, like it, it's, it's like and, and I get it. I, I do get it because it can happen at your job. Like, say, for instance, you had a job where things have been going well, but then you get offered another opportunity. And with that new opportunity, you can get paid even more money. It's, even, it's in an even better position. You'll be calling the shots a lot more. So while you're at your current job, you could be thinking, oh, man, mm, if, I, if I get up out of here, oh, man, oh, this is going to be sweet. So I, I, I see what you're saying. So it may not necessarily even be a cop out, but I feel like these guys, they can do more than one thing. Like they, even while they because think about this, even while they, they may be thinking about being possible head coaches. So I get that. And they, that may be on their minds or whatnot. I'm sure it'll be on their minds if they got an interview for it and if they really want the job. I get that. But wouldn't that make them want to perform even better in the playoffs? Because they could be like, oh, I, I really got to put on. I really got to show this team that I am the right guy for the job. Because an interview is an interview. Your, your job is still the job you have is still on full display because you got to perform in the playoffs. So I, I think while they could be distracted, like you said, uh, they also that could help them focus even more on doing a great job at their current job. So that can help them get the next job. Uh, and then he also said uh, Lamar potentially having the MVP curse. Now, I don't believe in curses at all. Um, I'm sure he's referencing the fact that MVPs, they don't win the Super Bowl. It's just something that doesn't happen. But this is the year for Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens to shut all of that down. 